All right, let's get into it. Yeah, I got my face up here today. We're good. Everything's solid. Everything's solid. Oh, Okay, heading into game one, we're going to have Mong versus his first opponent. Looks like that is going to be... Uh, I really need to memorize all these players' names so I know who's playing which. Uh, this is Harang 2. Harang 2, yep. I guess, I guess wrong 2 is pretty... Uh, Pretty straightforward. Or Harangi, as we found out in last cast. I think they just said it to you. So, in uh, the bottom right hand corner, in the purple, that is going to be Mong. And on the other side of the map, on the left side, in the green, that's going to be our hero in the Protoss player. That is going to be Harang E. Harangi. So, TVP, first of all, uh, let me, sorry, let me check the map. I'm like not prepared today, obviously. Super tired. Okay, so first map uh, is Neo Aztec. So, Neo Aztec, that funky three player map. Lots of interesting different ways that you can play this map, and it definitely sets up some interesting pushes coming out from the Terran player early on. Three player maps are always really interesting for Terran players just because you can set up some weird pushes that are very difficult to actually uh, hold off on things. Yes, the Protoss player is Harong 2, also known as Harongi, uh, because 2 is E in Korean. So, unfortunately, Harongi is getting in the wrong direction to start off with. I think that might actually have been a 10-10. Uh, a out from... No, I guess the factory is a little bit late, so it's probably a bit more of a normal factory time. We'll have to see. Uh, the big giveaway is if, if you go for the 10-10, uh, the you definitely go for more marines early on uh, to do a big push uh, while fake expanding behind it. But uh, I think that we'll, we'll find out once we see how many marines come out. Usually it's one or two, and then the marines stop. But if it goes higher than that, then we definitely know there's some pressure on the way for the Terran player. Mong definitely no stranger to aggressive builds. Uh, one of the things we also talked about on this map the other day, I believe it was uh, Flash playing on this map as well, is it's hell to actually break out of your base with these inverted ramps. Uh, so if your opponent can gain control of the high ground area in this natural, it becomes almost impossible to break out of your base. And that's why we typically see more aggressive builds on this map. Players just trying to uh, take map control and uh, keep their keep their opponent from easily taking that expansion or playing too greedily. Because if you play if you play too greedy, you can really find yourself in a bad position. So first two marines are out left seat. There's the third marine. He goes up to four or five. That's definitely a warning sign for uh, huge pressure. Yeah, I can lower the Korean audio just to, well actually I don't think I even lower the Korean. They're louder than normal today. I swear to God, they're not normally this loud. Um, I hope the levels are good now. I'll go ahead and lower it in OBS as well. Sorry about that. This is literally the same uh, settings that I used for last week, but it's weird that uh, it's not working totally correctly this week. Uh, four Marines into uh, a little bit more of a passive build for Mong, so a little bit unorthodox, but that's what I'm talking about on this map is you, players tend to go a little bit more aggressive than they need to. Four Marines is definitely uh, much more than you would typically get for just a generally safe expand build. But it makes it makes sure that like if uh, a zealot is coming across the map, if you have like zealot dragoon pressure early on, that you can deal with that a lot better than you could with just one or two marines um, and having to retreat all the way to the low ground and hide them between your barracks. So smart play for Mong, just being a little bit overly defensive uh, to make sure that you can get that natural up. And to some degree, I think Hrong took advantage of that. Hrongi has already got a faster nexus than one gateway up. He wasn't afraid to uh, expand off of only one nexus. Ah, uh, doesn't get the block on the SCV. Oh, maybe he might He might get the block on the SCV anyway. Yeah, that was beautiful. Very beautiful micro there from Hrongi stopping that SCV, and he's going to be able to pick that off. But Mong still has pretty good information. He knows his opponent has gone for an expansion, so 
Uh, there's no sort of all-in or anything coming his way. You know what? Ooh, what he canceled? Was that a starport that he canceled? Was that a second factory? Pretty interesting to find out what that was. I was quite paying attention. And the question here becomes, um, how are the players going to take their third base? This is uh, Mong versus Harong 2. Also known as Harongi. So, uh, as a Protoss player, you typically, on this map, you can play a lot safer and just wait for uh, the big gateway explosion once you get your third base. Um, but the problem is, you definitely have to beware of a timing attack by Terran, because if Terran is, manages to get across the map early on and sets up shop around uh, that area just above the natural, it becomes much more difficult to actually break out of the base and uh, take the third that you want as the Protoss player. But it is way out of position and it does open up the turn to counterattacks. So there's definitely drawbacks to strategies on this map. Uh, that's why three player maps are always very interesting is uh, whenever, whenever you want to, because it's asymmetrical, whenever you want to try to push your opponent down or take control of one part of the map, you're always giving up map control somewhere else. Uh, versus a asymmetrical map which kind of allows you to just kind of patrol units back and forth if you know what i mean so i think we're just seeing a pretty standard play from harangi uh just a couple of these vultures out on the map to scout out and see what things are going on oh did he catch the Stargate? This might actually be uh, two base carrier. If he caught the Stargate, then I don't think that Harangi can go two base carrier. But it really just depends. I think that was within scan range. But Mong is putting down a command center anyway. He's not going to go for a push. Or at least maybe not a very dedicated push. We'll see. There's a fleet beacon in the second Stargate. So we are going to be seeing two base carrier. Very interesting choice from Harangi. Looks like he's going to be uh, kind of drilling down that corridor down by the bottom left-hand side and harassing that third base. But um, a little bit interesting for Mong to expand in this way, but I think it actually makes a lot of sense because it makes his frontal pushes a lot stronger. Uh, like I was saying earlier, you always have to deal with the problem of every time you move out on the map, you give up position elsewhere on a three-player map. But this is really nice because it's almost a straight shot into his opponent's base. Um, and his units that are going forward protect both his third and his natural. But he will have trouble with carriers if they do manage to get out en masse. Love these strategically placed uh, mines around that. They just, they're not necessarily there for picking off units or anything like that. It's just purely for scouting purposes so that Monk has a good idea of where his opponent is, where the Dragoons are moving around, etc. So, really cool way of playing that. Very different from the normal mining style where you just kind of pile mines all over the Protoss Natural and force them to wait for observers to break out. By the way, side note, this is so much easier casting without having to observe myself. Um, because I, I literally, I just have both hands free to like talk and like drink coffee and like, you know, do wild gestures and things like that. So I love this. This is so much better than doing the Fat versus AJ the other day. Uh, small push coming up here uh, to the front, but there's definitely enough tanks to push that back for now. And honestly, I think Mong was a little bit greedy on his uh, his unit count. He really doesn't have a whole lot, and it's going to be a while before he can uh, ramp up the tank count and really push down his opponent. And meanwhile, two base carrier plus this third base is already established. Uh, it's at this point, I would place Sarangi pretty far ahead. If Mung doesn't go for some sort of timing push soon, he's definitely going to find himself in a world of hurt and unable to deal with these carriers. This is one of those things where, as a Terran player, you should almost be scanning on cooldown to make sure you know what your opponent is doing. But uh, Mung has just been playing it safe and not really worrying too much about finding out his opponent's tech. Just, oh, okay. Get, like, the observer. 
I didn't see the observer on the screen there for a second. You, are you guys hearing that like random white noise? I'm pretty sure that's not me. I'm pretty sure that's the uh, Ginyuta stream. So uh, if it makes that noise, I apologize. I, I can't do anything about it. So first two carriers coming out right now. This is very odd. Usually you wait for uh, four carriers to go for this build, but maybe Harangi feeling under pressure or overconfident. I'm not entirely sure, but he's going to come in here, do a little bit of harassment, maybe kill off a Goliath or two. Uh, good micro so far from Mong, doing a good job of just uh, moving and kiting backwards until he gets more reinforcements over here. And what a weird move! I don't think I've ever seen a two um, a two carrier push like that. Hey Fox fan, I'm reading, I'm watching the Korean stream on high because Source was lagging for me. I can try changing it to Source in the next game and see if that works, but. Uh, I just I'm just worried about the the stream lagging for us and me not being able to cast correctly. <clears throat> but lots of factories coming out now and only one machine shop. This is super weird. But I guess uh, the focus right now is just getting tons and tons of Goliaths. Uh, it seems Mong is perfectly. Uh, unconcerned with uh, his grand army. He's mostly just worried about getting a lot of Goliaths up because if he gets a lot of Goliaths up he can push away this carrier harass really really easily and with such an early investment in carriers Harangi really doesn't have that much of a grand army to threaten the third of the natural and so this small number of tanks is actually just going to be perfectly fine. A little bit of hole damage on that carrier. It's just so strange just having these two carriers hanging out. It looks like a pretty big dedicated push coming through here. It's going to be hard to get through that choke though. Um, he's going to have a lot better success if he tries to go to the other ramp. But at this point, honestly, as the Terran player, you need to have constant scans, see where the army is, <clears throat> make sure you're not getting out of position. But Rangi continuing with this really weird carrier harass uh, while moving his army through the center of the map. And this is actually really clever because it forces the Terran army to walk in between uh, this area out in front of the natural and the main. And that's such a long distance for ground units to move around in. But the big push is coming in now, and Mong is just going to sacrifice his main to these carriers. He doesn't seem to care that his stuff is getting destroyed. He's just going to try to go for a front push and outright win the game right now. And let me be clear, this is this is an all-in. Uh, there's pretty much no chance for Mong to get back in the game unless... Uh, Sarangi just happens to leave all his carriers right now, but it doesn't look like he's going to do that. And a Zealot's um, flank is set up, so that's going to be really brutal in the coming moments, uh, depending on what happens. But more and more units streaming out of those factories, maybe they'll be able to push away the uh, carriers for now. But the big attack coming in right now, can Harangi break this? This is a lot of Zealots, and they're already on top of the tanks. That's never what you want. And so many Zealots, they're going to swarm right on top of these tanks with good splits. He's going to easily be able to clean this up, I think. Just continue splitting those units. And uh, yeah, it's definitely going in favor of the Protoss at this point. Almost all the tanks are cleaned up. And this is going to be pushed back Mong with almost nothing. This is why you can't do straightforward pushes with this many Goliaths. Uh, that's the power of carriers, is you force out a lot of Goliaths, and then there's no tanks to fight the ground army. Uh, one of those carriers being picked off, maybe a second one? No. Uh, looks like Mong has to back off for right now, but a lot of stuff lost for Mong. He, his tank counts reset, he doesn't have a lot of units, and uh, his, he lost both his armories in his main base and a lot of SCVs. So definitely further behind now than he was before. And I don't see him coming back in this game. It's going to take quite a bit for uh, him to actually get back into this. Very interesting that uh, Harangi only stuck with the uh, handful of carriers. He didn't really go too ham on the carrier production and focused instead on getting lots of gateways up after those initial ones. So very smart play to bait out the Goliaths and destroy the ground army. Easy peasy. And the fourth base is up now for Harangi as well, so he's going to have tons of economy. Uh, Ten gates is pretty strong. He's even going to be getting plus one ups for his carriers. Uh, looks like some of the 
Uh, mech upgrades are starting again, but this is brutal. Finally, we're getting some of these vultures out with the spider mines. That's going to make life a lot easier uh, for pushes in the future. But at this point, I think Mong's already lost so much ground that I, he can't really make this happen. It was honestly way too many Goliaths in that army. You only really need about, we'll say, like uh, four Goliaths per carrier. That might be that might be an underestimate. Uh, four to six, we'll say four to six. Um, so just both players settling down, just trying to find an edge, find an advantage in this game. And it's a bit of a risky expansion for Sock, but at this point in the game, you have to take a the risky expansion in order to uh, get back into the game but there's only two tanks there's two tanks against the entire uh, Protoss army and I just I don't believe this is going to be enough to stop it even with uh, maybe the best mine hits in the world only two more tanks coming out right now this is this uh, very low machine shop count is really coming back to haunt Mong. It's not very good and beautiful positioning by the Protoss army. Just run up the rear ramp over here. There's no, almost no tanks in position to actually deal with it. But the Zelts were stuck behind the uh, dragoons for a little while, so a lot more damage done here than than maybe there should have been. But more and more units pouring in here. Uh, I think the carriers are just going to be too strong. The carriers picking off all the tanks, and there's nothing but Goliaths and a few vultures to deal with this. That's not going to be enough. Surely Mog is going to tap out soon, but he is continuing to try. He believes uh, he might be able to put, hold this and uh, push this back, but there's too many carriers, and carriers snowball really hard. But one of the carriers is going to go down to these Goliaths. A little bit of inattention there for Harangi, but you can see Mog's hands off the keyboard. There's the GG. Harangi taking the very first uh, match. Very well played. Harangi is continuing to impress me.